What do we got here, mate? Some of the socks off. Martin. <laughs> Six B, maybe. I don't know. It's uh. You want to check? Yeah, sure. Six A. I bring shame to my German heritage. Six A. Martin. Mm. Martin. So this is like half a Martin, I think, like because Luke wants to do this and he called it the Junzen, and it's like. Instead of being brewed in March, it was brewed in June. So it's got like three or four months of lagering That's not before we practice. So I was, it was an investment, but like as we said on the post podcast, but like the amount of effort we put into it. We're filming here. What's up, bro? The light's flashing. Are you actually filming? Yeah. Yeah, oh, but it's, it's all good though. You can you come in and. Cut that. <laughs> So yeah, it's had like three or four months lagering, not quite the full uh, traditional, you know, kept cold in the cave since March sort of thing, but it's um, an investment. But yeah, like we said on the podcast, it's like we put so much effort into it and it was like not quite perfect. It's like, you know how we're doing this homebrew challenge, we're trying to like really nail the styles, you know, for whatever they are, we're probably a little bit too sweet, caramel sweet. Maybe. So, I think this was the original Oktoberfest beer, wasn't it? Like, you brewed this and you celebrated Oktoberfest with it and then there was like the whole fest beer thing was like, you know, reiterated to make it a little bit more commercially appealing. But yeah, I think Martin is just brewed in March and kept cold for like a good chunk of time. So, you just keep asking questions, don't you? You don't have to answer the previous one and you're already grilling me about the next one. All right. (laughs) I'm a journalist. (laughs) <laughs> right, we got Pilsner, Vienna, Munich, uh, Abbey Malt, Cara Munich, and Cara Bohemian. So the Cara Munich we put in a late edition, like in the ball off, as we've been doing with some of our recipes of late, just for, like to try and get the um, colour as opposed to like you know the full, like the full extraction from the malt. Yeah. And in thinking that we probably should have done the same for the Cara Bohemian as well, because that's the caramel that's coming through so strong. So um, that's your malt bill. Uh, pretty simple, just Hallertau, um, 60 minute, 20 minute. And we used German Bock Lager yeast. Okay. So this oh, probably used that before, what's the difference? Yeah, I think Luke ordered that one and we probably would have just gone like the White Labs or the, oh no, this would have been White Labs. So this probably at the start of us, like, trying our hand at making yeast starters okay so yeah i reckon it would have been like from the website just you know suggested for a particular style so yeah. that's where it's come from so um, this isn't as strong or as rich as a donkel's bot uh more malt depth and richness than a fest beer which is about right because that's what your fest beer is kind of compared to this um with heavier body and slightly less hops and less hoppy and equally malty as a Czech amber lager. Okay. So yeah, like, all, like the fermentation side of it is so clean. The malt is just a little bit towards the caramely end of it. So that's probably the one thing that I would change. But like, so like Pilsner, Music, Munich, Vienna, I'd probably just maybe go with those. Yeah. Piss off the Abbey, Carabahemian. I mean, I don't know how strict we are on colour. I think it's pretty generous on what you can do for a Martin, but like, yeah, for what you're going to put in for colour, you probably, I don't know, it's debatable. Like you probably get it anyway from the Munich and the Vienna. The yeah, colour. I think so, you'd hit the style from that. Yeah, sure. I think like when we made this, we had visions of like drinking this by the Stein and just like ploughing through it as if it was Oktoberfest or something, but I, I don't think it's that sessionable. No. What do you? I, I no. don't think I'm gonna drink it that quick. Is it? No, no, no. Even like it's just a bit rich and caramely to yeah. drink it that quick. I think if you change that carabohemia out, <clears throat> yeah, I think you could probably do it. Yeah. What is the ABV and IBU on this, by the way? Uh, so it's six point one. That's really sensible for a six point one. Yeah, that's the thing as well. We probably like it has the potential to do damage if you are um yeah getting too carried away. And the IBU comes out to be. 21. Yeah, it's about right. I, I, you know, yeah. I feel. You know my thoughts on IBU anyway, so it's like uh, we, we share the same opinion yeah. on that. But it's just, it's just that's what it says, and yeah, roughly, yeah, it's mm. not not overpowering. Doesn't linger. Yeah. That said, though, I have 
lots of smaller cakes that I can break this into and I do have one of those hop spiders so maybe I do a bit of a makeshift IPL, IPL. experiment mm. I like that a lot well I drank that whole beer just then um <laughs> we had uh, a beer that was made very carefully uh, brewed very carefully and we dedicated a lot of time it's maybe missed the mark a little bit but I think we know what we did wrong sort of thing yeah but like but I think we're it also the guidelines though oh yeah so like it's, it's on the sweeter end of yeah yeah so it's not is. like it's not too far off that we're like you know we're never going to make this again and like while it's not going to be a super smashable beer it will be a, you know a pleasantly drinking beer and like the silver lining is we can try making an IPL version of this and I dare say you know for October next year maybe we get a Martin done in March that might be a little lighter in colour a little maybe a little lower ABV and yeah good learning experience this is like kind of the first one where like Luke and I were putting our heads together and like with no reference point we're just saying like let's just have a crack at it and I think the whole reason we made that mistake on the malt is we went to one of those like you know those substitution charts where you're like if you don't have this use this because it would have been like maybe we want to put something in and we accidentally add and we accidentally ordered Kara or something like that. Okay. I'm throw Luke completely under the bus because it was like his <laughs> his thing that did it. But <laughs> no, it's um good learning experience and like we're not disappointed at all with what came out of it. So I'm gonna have another one. Yeah, homebrew challenge. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, I think it actually is one of Luke's beers on the program. So like our 40 beers each covering all 120 styles from the BJCP guidelines. Uh, it's a lot of beers to get through. Some of them we probably want to do and do again. Some we probably want to do once and forget about it. But Let you know what to change. Mm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'd, I'd happily do this that's one a, again. Like, it's. I think that's a great example of the style. Yeah. To be, in my opinion, that's a good yeah. example of the style. Maybe yeah. slightly on the sweeter side for, yeah. for some people, but yeah, I'm going to drink another pint while we oh, get ready man. for the next one. Let's do it.